Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to the Adventure Incorporated podcast. I am your dungeon master. My name is Anthony Reed. This is episode 41, and it is the first episode of the Twist of Fate story arc. Patrons, hey, patrons, I'm talking to you real quick. Just, it's just us, okay? Just you and me uh, talking real quick on the side. Thank you. I want to thank you personally for being patrons, for supporting the show. I just want to say, I, I see you. You're doing great, and I, uh, and I love it. I, I'm so grateful for you, to you, and the show thanks you, and, and, and we, we think you're wonderful. Okay, but I, I just wanted to get that out on the side right here. Just just us, and now we'll bring everybody else into the fold. Uh, hey, if you felt left out just now, head over to patreon.com slash adventuring and become a patron. Then you won't be left out you can come back and re-listen to this as a patron and say hey now he's talking to me and i will be because you'll be a patron at patreon.com slash adventure inc with your own personalized rss feed with the bonus content that comes each and every month that's the place to be and if you haven't been there well that's uh, uh, easily fixable just go to patreon.com slash adventure inc i did some like flourish on that one uh, also, don't forget to check out our website, adventuringpod.com, for all kinds of cool stuff uh, that you might want to see there. You know, there's, like, world guide info, there's uh, links to cool things, there's a shop, it's got t-shirts and stickers. Yeah, there's all kinds of great stuff there. Go check it out, adventuringpod.com. Okay, um, ooh, I, I feel like I was, uh, I came in strong, and now we're just sort of limping along. Uh, aside from this rhyme. So I guess maybe it's time to get started. Nobles and farmers, knights and scoundrels, gather round, gather round to hear a tale of excitement and mystery. Brave adventurers facing grave dangers. Bill Roth, the ranger. She's a grimalkin, that's, uh, but that's understood. No pets allowed, even though she's not a pet. I will wait outside. Everyone, if anyone needs anything, I am outside. Scarpin, the cleric. Should I just try and snipe them from over here? Yeah, okay. I did say they were as good as dead. I would hate for my, you know, to break my word on our first contract as Adventure Incorporated. Ellery, the bard. We would want you to leave this warehouse. He points behind him. Mm -hmm. Church! Oh, sorry. We want you to leave this church. Deerin, the wizard. He say you no worship Shattered Fang. Yeah, man. He's like super wrong. We love Broken Tooth. Uh, Shattered Fang, man. Prepare yourselves, for these are the tales of Adventure Incorporated. I was thinking maybe we could do some character management. Woo! That would be, there's like a, I mean, like fire on the screen or something. If this were a visual medium, it's not, but. uh, Can you like add a sound effect so all of our woos sound like a crowd? Probably, but I probably won't. Um, So, uh, it's, you guys are level six now. Woo! Yep. Uh, I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you some questions, like. Well, I'm really just going to ask you one question. I'll start with Deeran. What's level six like for you? Uh, one more than level five. Uh, True. Is kind of the <laughs> True. The main thing, you know. Uh, so I rolled a hit die. Uh, I'm taking a risk. Uh, so uh, right now, I now have 40 hit points. Nice. I, ha- I rolled a five, so that's pretty good. Um Imagine if you went to level six and it was one less than the level you were at before. It would be awful. Noted. Uh, (laughs) So this is the first time ever in my history of playing D&D where con hasn't been like a dump stat for me. Uh, So like getting 12 hit points just for free uh, has been huge and cool. And I want to do this all the time now <laughs> what what are Deeran's what is Deeran's dump stat strength yeah <laughs> dexterity <laughs> wisdom no that's actually a really good <laughs> I think that's a good first date question instead of like what are your you know strengths yeah. or whatever <laughs> what's, uh, what's, your, your dump what's your dump stat <laughs> oh, mine man. is mine as like a human is is con well that's mine as a, yeah, yeah. As a human is absolutely dexterity 
Uh, yes. No question. <laughs> yeah, I think mine Charisma. might be. Uh, <laughs> Got him. Shots fired. Boom. <laughs> What's the one where uh, you aren't emotionally wounded? Uh, wisdom. <laughs> that would be a wisdom dump stat. <laughs> yep. Uh, that there it is. <laughs> I should have seen that coming, and I didn't. <laughs> Uh, to answer the rest of your questions, Anthony, Deeran also learned two third level spells. Uh, he learned fly and counter spell. And he got his uh, sixth level arcane tradition. Uh, with the arcane tradition of the adept that the patrons at the beholder level have made, uh, the sixth level for me is when I prepare spells for the day, I may leave one slot unprepared. That spell can be any level or any spell of the appropriate level that you know. Uh, so basically, the idea is that like, oh shit, I know I studied something like this, man. Uh, uh, oh, and then he does the spell, uh, <laughs> kind of as a last minute, uh, last gasp thing, which is great because that means I never have to prepare counter spell. <laughs> Yeah, mechanically, it's a little bit like a sorcerer, um, like for one slot. You have one spell slot of sorcerer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. I do like the idea that Deeran learned Counterspell from anti Deeran and then just like, was like, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, man, that must be in a book somewhere. <laughs> I know. I've, hold on. I know I've got this one. <laughs> As he like flips through the pages and like on the way by, he sees fly and is like, Oh, that might be cool too. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, Scarpin, what'd you pick up? Picked up an additional level. So I'm a level six cleric. Very clerk. Nice. Clerk. clerk. Oh, oh, I know. I'm a clerk now. <laughs> a level six clerk. I said, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> uh, I rolled poorly. So I have 43 hit points. So I will be slowly decreasing my uh, ability to tank in this game. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm picking up speed here, bud. <laughs> That's but the, the cool wizard. <laughs> yeah. The cool thing I got uh, was cloaked in dream. And I can cast it three times. And I can cast sanctuary on somebody, probably myself, uh, for one round. And I can do that as a bonus action cool that's rad um is that a class feature or is that a spell anthony uh it is a class feature of the so patreon created could, dream cleric so he could use that and cast a spell in the same round correct because it is it is uh an effect as like though the, you are under the effect of sanctuary but it is a class feature Ooh, that it makes also it makes it so that it is not tied to a school and it is divine in nature not that those will ever matter, I'm sure. Can't see why they would. <laughs> feels very feels very irrelevant to call it out then. Uh, oh. Let's ignore it. Yeah, let's ignore it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> Ellery, how does your level look? Um. So I got two non-bard spells um, that I got to pick up. So I grabbed aid, which is pretty cool. And fairy fire, which is also pretty cool. Cool, cool. Um, and then I got a a, a spell for me. Um, I got six extra hit points. Um, and that's about it. I like the idea. Like these I'll spells are for you guys. This spell is for <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, this spell is for me. It's really just because I haven't picked it yet. I see. <laughs> uh, um, no, no, you're keeping it a surprise stuff, so you can unveil yeah, I'm it. Keeping later. it a surprise. So here's here's the thing is that part of me really wants to like lean into this um, like from a character standpoint. She gets to pick up an extra spell. She's going to pick up something like real nasty uh, as like a holdover. I know you said that when we wake up, our like memories of that life are fading. But since she was such a badass. <laughs> and, and I think that's OK. I think it's OK to carry some of that through. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I, in general, I don't want you to feel like, 
uh, you have to carry this baggage I saddled you with. So take as much no, of it no, no. as you want and leave as much yeah. of it as you want. <laughs> yeah. And I think like this is the one time that on like getting a new spell, like there would be that holdover. So that's why I'm taking a while to kind of try and pick the right. Also, don't forget one. about your ability to forget an old spell. Yes. All right. Cool. I remember that. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that ability. To <laughs> Your face totally confirmed that. No, no, I thought about it earlier. I just hadn't oh, okay. like gotten around to it yet. Uh, okay, tell me, Belroth, about your sixth level. Um, so Belroth is using the Tasha's Ranger. So at sixth level, Belroth uh, moves thirty-five feet and gains a. Uh, swim speed and climb speed equal to his move speed. So he's a little faster. <laughs> Uh, that's all I, I just <laughs> He's just bad. He's just buffer. I mean, honestly, that's pretty impressive. I, it really is. Like, think about swimming 35 feet per six seconds, which is, I don't know what that would be. I can't do that math. Right? Because one turn is six seconds. I don't want to talk about that. Um, so we're... <laughs> <laughs> and if I use both... Of, and then if I use both of my actions, if I use my action and my move action, I move 70 feet. Yeah. I'm, yeah. a, I'm uh, Michael Phelps. <laughs> but I also just love the idea that if you were in a foot race with yourself while swimming, you would uh, tie. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, All thanks. right. I like it. <laughs> uh, Wait, I have a question. Oh, yes, of course. What can I do for you? Something like silence. Is that a magical effect? It's a spell. It is a magical effect, like in that it can be dispelled. Okay. By dispel magic. Yes. Yes. That was what I was asking. <laughs> Not by scarpins. <laughs> uh, what? Not by scarpins. He couldn't do it last time. Well, last time might have been a special case. But we'll say a, a typical silence effect. You could dispel. So you drag your sled <laughs> with the uh, scarpin still unconscious on it uh back to the uh the cave uh yeah you are straining right now i imagine like because you're still pretty hurt right uh, all of you are, mm-hmm. are, most of you are at one right <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> yep okay uh as you arrive back at the cave uh eridar and uh ellery uh your grandmother are uh, standing at the cave like watching for your return um, and you can see your grandmother physically relax when she sees you uh, coming through the woods. Um, and Eridar, uh, who is basically just staying there with his hands behind his back, he's like nodding uh, appreciatively at your return. Uh, as you get close enough, he says, you were successful then. Grandma. She like looks around. We killed a demon. Oh dear, that's nice. Nice, nicely done. Well done. Thanks. Was it good? Do, do you think it'll it'll help build your tail? Oh, I think so. I think it's a really good. You know, you know how sometimes you know you've got a big long story and then you've got like a little thing that that happens on the side. Um, I think it's one of those. Oh, well, that's good, dear. I'm glad. I, uh, it feels like a big thing to be a, a just a side story, but I, I hope that it's. <laughs> I hope oh yeah, you... I almost I almost died. I think I was dead for a minute. It, oh, it but, was a little touch and go in... for a bit. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Deeran checks on Scarpin because uh, he doesn't know what <laughs> else to do. Like he gets really nervous uh, and turns around and looks at the sled to see if Scarpin's awake. He's not. Also, Ellery is still wearing Deeran's coat, so like the uh, <laughs> sleeves are like dragging on the ground. And... <laughs> uh, yeah, Deeran's almost entirely bled through his own like undershirt uh, <laughs> yeah. as he like because he's also like really effed up uh <laughs> I, I like the idea that we're all like just like covered in blood and then ellery is in like this yeah. big coat like, <laughs> like <laughs> uh, you all look like um bad you look bad <laughs> would you like to come in and rest for a while very much so yes oh, please yeah man 
uh, Eridar, like, allows you access to his cave. Uh, he says, I know it is not much, but hopefully you can find some rest and solace here. Thank you so much. Yeah, Deeran, like, uh, I don't know, uh, tries to, like, help take care of Scarpin. He doesn't know what to do. Um, I mean, you can tell you know, looking he's... at Scarpin that he's alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, uh, sorry, I hiccuped in the middle of my yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you had so audio, audio issues. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that wasn't an... <laughs> Yeah, it was a internal audio no. issue uh, from like production level. Like, <laughs> yeah, you the, know what the I mean. signal was corrupt. The production of sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but yeah, so he like he grabs a towel uh, and he starts like pressing down on Scarpin's wounds to try to like uh, staunch the flow of blood better and stuff like. So that when Scarpin wakes up, he can take care of himself better. Thanks, man. Uh, oh, no, Scarpin. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah. Glad you're glad you're all right, man. Uh, it was it was pretty touch and go. Uh, wait. Yeah, I, it was, uh, that was really nice, of y'all, to give me that rest. I feel much better. Well, Scarpin, we does he look much better? No. <laughs> <laughs> Scarpin, He's we rested. won. Yeah, I've been, I've been digesting that. Did wait? I can't remember. Did Scarpin see the pit? Probably not. No. He was unconscious. Yeah. yeah. Did you see the pit? No. <laughs> <That didn't laughs> <say that. laughs> I'm just digesting here. Yeah, it's uh, unbelievable what well, he did to the dreamscape, but even more where. We're one seventh of the way done. Hooray! <laughs> That's yeah. a it's a really good way to look at it, Scarpin. Hooray! Yeah, man. Uh, and then Deeran like tells uh, Scarpin the like what happened after he passed out, uh, complete with Belros uh, loosing an arrow into the depths of the the abyss or whatever uh, the pit uh, to try to you know frighten off. Uh, the I, uh the uh, demons okay um, oh, yeah man uh, it was like it was like the most cool hero thing like i've ever seen him do was, like no offense like you do you do cool hero stuff a lot but like that was like wow bill roth gives a Bell thumbs Ruff. up he's just not sure <laughs> like, <laughs> you might maybe hit hit a demon in there who knows I, I i i yeah yes who knows who could know i definitely didn't miss a demon <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what that's what Darren said yeah, yes <laughs> um no that's he saw into the pit that we're gonna have to go there some time i think yeah that's what they said right that like we're gonna have to do you think we have to go in there now should we have followed oh no like right away, should did did Belroth and I mess it up? Like, were we supposed to go down there and no, like? No, I don't. I don't think so. No, kill old Scratch again. I like right away. No, dear, and I I don't think I don't think so. I mean, well, because like remember they said that like, uh, killing a demon here only sends it to the pit, and then we gotta get to the pit to kill the demon for real. Remember? I I do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, the old Scratch said that they. They could return by walking the path of skulls. So I, maybe there's some hard way for them to get back. But I mean, this this had to have helped. I mean, yeah, maybe these sort of beings have been so patiently trying to escape for so long. I'm I'm sure time is very different to them. It's hard to know, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Right now, I think we should rest and. Be proud of what we've done, because we are the first people that I know of who've killed a greater demon, lesser demon. What what classification of demon are they? What what do you think, everybody? And, Be- and Belaroth takes out his notes and starts like sketching stuff out. <laughs> I, I would say they're a pretty evil, a pretty pretty evil class of villain. Mm. Sketch. Uh, Deeran looks at Eridar to get like a feeling of whether 
uh, this win was actually a loss because they didn't pursue Old Scratch into the pit? Uh, Eridar has not been, he's been, uh, standing guard at the edge of the cave. Uh, Ellery's grandmother is here, but she's just, uh, sitting with Ellery. Uh, you, the look on her face seems to be that she's just enjoying, uh, spending time with her granddaughter, um, who she hasn't seen in a while. Um, from her expression, I mean, you're not really picking anything up, uh, to that regard. She seems to be just pretty content with, uh. Uh, her experience here like she's not like suddenly very concerned that you fucked it up you know right uh i mean she wouldn't say it in front of valerie anyway right right so that makes sense (laughs) you know she doesn't want to like well she might say something i mean you might you feel like maybe if she really felt it she'd say something like well like i always say the job's not done till you go into the pit and kill the thing um so uh, (laughs) she didn't say that uh so you know you might be okay that's true. That's true. All right. That's a that's a good uh good point, Anthony. Now I feel uh just the same as No no wisdom has been doled out, so at least neutral with response. Yeah, 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 yeah. So at least I don't know whether they're disappointed in me. <laughs> um She she says, uh after you get some rest, I think it'd probably be wise for you to head to the capital you have done a great service for our town here for our village and for all the villages surrounding i can't imagine that if he was able to intrude upon our dreams like that that he would stop simply here when he was done i imagine he'd move on to other villages if he hadn't already collected others under his banner and so you i think you're owed a great reward you should go to the capital and, and get one. Uh, oh. Oh. Um. But, but w- wow. How do we, <laughs> I guess, prove that? Because I feel like last time we went and tried to talk to any sort of politician about the ongoing demon threat, they all kind of didn't believe us for a bit. Well, did you have a village elder to send you with a letter? No, we didn't. No, no we did no. not. Well, that's my role. I can talk about the troubles the town saw. I can talk about the issues that we were facing and, and what you were able to do to thwart them. And as long as you're pretty confident we're not going to have to deal with that creature anymore, then I can send you along with this letter and hopefully Stout Heart will do something for you. Wow, Grandma. This is this is really... And she looks back at... at the boys and she's like this is so amazing you know i remember you always said never go to the capital unless you've put your big girl success pants on and so (laughs) this you know this means a lot that you you know that you think that we're worth it well you know me i if i don't have to deal with the stout hearts i'm all too happy not to and anytime you head to the capital that's just more More problems with them and the mainlanders. So, I am giving you this gift, but it's also a burden. Yeah, that that sounds right. Yeah, should we, like, go back to town to make sure everything's okay before we head over to the the capital? Aradar and I have been feeling out the dream space around here since you knocked that creature out. And I can tell already things have cleared up. Now, I don't know if tensions are going to truly be gone between us and the Death Watchers, but I can tell that at least I'll have the ability to rally my town, my village, to do what what is right and what they're supposed to be doing. Well, except for Ellery's friends who you said their casserole and cooking was bad. Well, I think even that I can smooth over. They were my parents' friends. I think we can smooth that over just fine. Okay. Um, uh, Ellery's grandma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, I kind of promised uh, a friend of ours back home uh, some of your pizza because I heard it was the best pizza in the land. Oh. And um, I think Tiavano would be really sad if she didn't get any or or us for have tried to have tried it. 
I don't um I don't think we have the 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 time or the resources to be making pizza out here right now but one day when you uh when you're all done traveling we'll we'll do some pizza that sounds that'd be really nice sounds lovely okay um also do you think maybe (laughs) Deeran looks like more more upset about no pizza than pretty much everything else Uh, probably uh more upset since like the only thing in the past three days that's made Deeran more upset is when Ellery went down uh everything else uh less so fair enough because he also Um, thought he wasn't gonna get pizza if she died yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> my, my pizza well, how am I going to get pizza man? now? <laughs> my pizza plug is yeah. out. No one ever serves pizza um, at a funeral. <laughs> uh, I'm putting it in yeah, my will. Nope, that's Don't not worry, what I boys. want. Here we go. <laughs> Don't worry, boys. Nice. Yeah, all you can eat pizza party at my, at my funeral. Unless it's a Tuesday, anyway. baby, then it's Taco Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a very complicated will <laughs> they are grandma do you think that maybe since we fixed the demon problem that that you could tell me where mom and dad are oh yes of course dear i sent them i sent them to the capital hoping that we would be able to uh well i didn't think anyone would look there because everyone knows how i feel about the capital so yeah uh, we do I w- you always say the stout hearts more like the chicken feet. Well, that's a very polite way to say what I normally say, but uh, you know that's that's fine. I was I was censoring for the sake of of our friends. Yes, yes. Thank you. Wait, what do you normally say? No, don't say it because uh, Scar- <laughs> We can't say things like that in front of Scarpin. He gets very upset. I want to know. Uh, she lot. leans in and whispers to you, and it is the most vile thing you have ever heard <laughs> this woman ever <laughs> even remotely come close to saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Deeran sits back down, uh, like ashen face. <laughs> I wish I hadn't asked. <laughs> <laughs> like head in hands and just like sweating. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Oh, no. The Stout Hearts. So green. Were, the Stout Hearts were a family uh, here from Eviara for uh, generations back, but of course they have sold themselves out to the mainlanders. They have uh, allowed themselves, uh, in order to feel like they have some ruling power over this land, they've made themselves the toadies to the empire. That was another nice word that you use in place of the one you normally do. Yes. What? What is? What? Wait. What do you say instead of toadies? Uh, oh, I feel like you should have learned from Deeran's face. Oh, that's then, true. You want to <laughs> ask for clarification? That's fair. Yeah, Deeran does not ask for clarification. <laughs> <laughs> do Do you think that the uh, South Hearts are they not? They don't have the best interests of the uh, Empire in mind. Like they're, they're off fighting the Tritons. The Stout Hearts, they're part of the Diamara clan. And I think they've always had their own best interests at heart. They mine this place for our spellstone. And they ship it back to the mainland. Around the mountains. You can't get from here to the rest of the Empire without going uh, by boat because of the mountains and the desert beyond. So when this, when the Empire found this place, they really just wanted to strip it for resources. And we've been here trying to fight that influence ever since. Okay, well, uh, we we haven't. They've been away. They've been so busy. So we haven't. We don't even know how they feel about the the demon problem. We've just been dealing with Adventure Incorporated. With the Empire itself. Is that what you're asking? What you're asking about? Well, just uh, the the Emperor. Like I don't know if they even know about the demon problem. 
Probably not. She's got a one-track mind for these tritons. I don't know if anything could pull her away from that. Well, maybe the destruction of the world will. <laughs> she doesn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, neither does Dieran. Well, why don't we stay here the night and bandage up our wounds and, and, and rest and then head to the capital tomorrow? Seems reasonable. Uh, uh, Eridar, I'm sorry. I have uh, several tangential questions for you about not related to demon things. Um, mm. Oh, yes. I, I just didn't want to. I didn't want to take way. the conversation away. I figured we could talk later about it. Uh, he's standing at the mouth of the cave. He turns back. He says, "Whatever. Yes. Uh, let me know." Okay. Okay. Yes. Thumb. Hey, Eridar. Yes. Hey, that that thing you did to the grandma shield it, it it's it's inside of me now like it, it protected me during our fights th- thank you for that it's still with me really well that's not right well well okay well i was i was just grateful it was there but it shouldn't be he comes forward and he uh places a hand on your shoulder and he closes his eyes and murmurs to himself yes, okay. Oh, okay. and then he says I think I think you have had a seed take root what we have done to you has planted itself in you I think this is a good thing it certainly seemed like it and even in, in the dream world, I even had a new holy symbol on my chest. And Scarpin looks down at his chest. Does he see anything? No, nothing has changed. Yeah, it, was a, it was a plumeria flower. It was right. It was there. But beneath it is that shield. This seems like a positive growth to me. It is not something I would cut back, let's say. Uh, I don't think that there is... Uh, a way to to pinch this hard or or to move forward from it. But I will note that I have been wrong before. It is sometimes difficult to tell the difference between a flower and a weed. Yeah, that's fair. But they all have their own beauty, don't they? No. Uh Oh, no. (laughs) Uh, Well... Well, weeds can be very dangerous and choke the life from many other things. Uh, you sacrifice. Scarpin looks at his, his, his dead half. <laughs> <laughs> you sacrifice a great deal for whatever minor advancement you get from a weed. It is important to know the difference between the two and be prepared to act accordingly. Well, thanks anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes and sits down and rests. Um, well, Eridar, that's a that's a good question. I guess this is a good transition. Um, the overgrown wilds. The the is is this the working of your dragons? Because the way it sounded like before we went to the dreamscape was that it may have been, and I just wanted some clarification. Because if if that's really what it is, I I would is. It would really clarify a lot of things with my life. Wouldn't answer I can questions, tell you a s- but it would clarify things. I can tell you a story. Oh, okay. uh, but I must admit that I've never been very good at that. And I don't know if this story is interesting. Oh, I'm on board care. already. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, this is my kind of story because it's the kind of story I also tell. I've been told. S- that I- Several hundred years ago. Before shadow fell on this land, there are my people went through a change, a transformation. When we did, we were cut off from power that we once knew, from a master that we once knew. We had nothing. We were alone. And so we fled. 
For some of us, that was a fleeing here, to the south, where we found a new home, grew it from what was nearly a desert to what you see around you now, this lush forest. For some of us, that was to head north, to lands that were familiar and had had a lot of influence of our former father because his magic was so strong there many of them were drawn to it and they changed that place as well from what was a rocky cold and barren area sprouted a massive forest that stretched from one coast to the other, spread to the south, to the east, and makes what you now call the untamed forest. Both that place and this place are siblings, hmm. in a way, as both have been touched by me and the others like me. Bill Roth is writing down tons of notes. They are places of transformation. Places of cultivation and growth. Um, it, uh, <clears throat> this creature here, um, Freya, who you spoke to not too long ago, was found mm. in the untamed forest. I, I don't know if there's any sort of... Now, I've been studying her for quite some time, and I have lots of notes but i'm also quite fond of her i just wonder if you could give me an insight into her origin or like why the features develop the way they do because what i see in the untamed forest is almost like a memory of one creature smooshed together with a memory of another creature sometimes in chaotic ways that are destructive and other times in very controlled ways sort of like how she is I, I don't know if you have insight into that. And this is my interpretation. I don't know if I'm... In fact, I don't know if I'm right. Looking at this creature is like looking at a nephew or a niece. Oh! It is... I can see the influence my siblings have had on the creatures like this one. Mm-hmm. That is not to say that this creature was crafted or created by other dragons. Okay, that's a relief. This creature is a natural creature who has come because other creatures who were in that forest had aspects of themselves cultivated. Huh. Sometimes for cultivation, we must, as I did with Scarpin, remove something. To allow something new to flourish. Hmm. The cycle of growth and death is, by its nature, transformation. With each passing moment, there are pieces of you that are no longer there, and pieces of you that have come anew. Each thing you learn, each idea you have, is you changing and transforming. And so, too, have they brought their cultivation to the creatures there. This creature is touched by that magic. Born from it, but not directly by it. Hmm. So, it's almost as though they are... Uh, they're not necessarily growing with a goal... It's almost experimenting, no. seeing what will flourish when something is changed and something is pushed in a certain direction or removed and prevented from going in another, another direction. Like you in the weeds even and that, the flower. Even that applies more intent oh. than I think is here. Okay. There is simply a an unknown, an uncertainty to what can be when one f turns to their surrounding and begs it to change. 
and the creatures like this are the result of that. Oh. Billroth is... Oh, it almost looks like he's not listening because he's writing so many things down at the same time. <laughs> but he's also, like, checking in to, like, make sure... Like, whenever he stops talking, like, he takes those big pauses. Belroth stops writing and looks up. Like, <laughs> scared that's it. <laughs> <laughs> if I may ask a question. Oh, yeah, yes. To all of you. Oh. You have done something colossal here. Something quite impressive. But there is a daunting road ahead of you. How do you plan to tackle that road? Well, you know, my grandma always says, you can do anything that you set your mind to as long as you got your best friends by your side. I do say that, yes. That's, that is a thing that I have said on more than one occasion. I, I find it, uh, that's, that's a, an interesting one that you picked out there, because I've also <laughs> said, you know, that everything you do, it requires patience and planning. And uh, this sounds like maybe you forgot about that part, but that's fine. Grandma, I've always, I've never listened. I've never heard you say that. I, I believe you that you have. I believe, I believe that you have said that. But I've never, I've never heard it or, or maybe I've just never, you know, like listened to it. I believe that. I believe that. Um, yeah. She always, she always tells us the one about how you always say, uh, like every road is built by forming, uh, or is formed by taking one step after another and seeing where it takes oh, you. Oh, I thought you were going to say the one where it was every road has its thorns. No, every road. What is the say? What saying it's am every, I thinking? Every rose, every rose has its thorns. Well, I didn't think it made a lot of sense as every road has its thorns. I was like, I, this is not one of your grandma's best. <laughs> yeah, she told us that one when we were drinking one night. Oh, is, is that our? Oh, yeah, my grandma knows. Oh, okay, uh, cool. <laughs> She was slurring her speech. That's probably why it like, and it bugged me the entire night because I was like, "This makes no sense." Well, I've I've yeah, been on I've some been roads with some thorns situations. though, but but not every road. I'll give you that. A lot of roads have their yeah. thorns. Many many roads I've been on have thorns, but I've never said a that decent, before. A decent number of roads have have some thorns to yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every road is formed by people taking one step after another. Mm -hmm. Uh but not all of those roads have thorns. Some phony some... roads are built by people taking a step <laughs> and then another step while there are thorns around. That's th We could workshop that one. That one feels like it's a truth nugget <laughs> waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, is this how yeah, you, do you workshop all these, these cool like... sayings, Idra? Oh, no. No, yeah, yeah it just wisdom happens as you live, you know? I've said that one many <laughs> That's times. That's a good one. That's <laughs> that a good, a good one. one. <laughs> yeah, you know, she always she always followed it up with never make wisdom you dump that. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Damn it, Rob wow. says in real life. <laughs> yeah, wow. Damn. <laughs> uh, Ellery's dump stat is intelligence, so <laughs> she took it to heart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Dieran. <laughs> Um, Deeran houses the last of the like uh, the bowls of food that everybody's been like passing around, you know, family style. Uh, <laughs> Deeran has just waited until everyone stopped eating and then taken the big serving bowl for himself to finish off. Uh, you, you can see Eridar the, muttering a little bit. He's like, oh, that was my rations for the week, but okay. <laughs> uh, he puts the the remaining empty bowl down. And he says, "Man, this was this was so nice." Um. Is everybody kind of, are we good to like, oh, you asked a question. I am so sorry. Uh, we got off on that tangent about just kind of letting stuff happen. Uh, Cause like that's, I kind of took it to answer. mean that was your plan. You were just going to let stuff happen. I mean, <laughs> well, it, it usually works out for me. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ellery's grandma thinks we should go to the capital. 
and I think maybe checking in with Elder Riggs and Wesley and even even Carapath and the, the council we, would be a good idea. We do have, um, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, everyone, we do have the location of another one, I think. Or we have the, a good lead on the other, another one, the, the, uh, the twins. Um, yeah, ones, the, the, strangers. the strangers. That's what they're called. We have a good lead on but, them, and so I think we need to regroup and maybe rally our own forces and not forces, but rally our own strength and, and maybe um, gain some stronger ways to attack them and find information so that we can make a plan. Cause you're, you're right. We don't have one yet, but we will because we have to. So B- Baroth, do you think we should go straight after the, the, the strangers? I think we should go to the capital first. I think we should regale the tail and get some rewards and maybe get some good equipment and then go off and f- kind of figure out where they could be. Because with this one, we had a good plan. Basically, we have the dream. We have someone who's good at dreams. We're going into the dreams. We're going to take them out of the dream. The strangers? We don't know. I feel like maybe you are a little bit confused about where I'm sending you because I, I want yeah. you to go to Tianol, which is the capital yeah, here in Eviara. Oh. oh, yeah, I was going to ask if you meant the capital of Eviara or the capital of the Empire. I don't uh, care about the capital sounded, of the Empire. Yeah, it didn't sound like you did when you were like, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, w- when you whispered what you whispered to me. Uh, <laughs> it didn't sound. It didn't sound like we were going there, man. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, I still think the plan is the same. We should still go to Tianol and then figure out, strategize along the way and, and such. Yeah, at the very least, we know that there's standing stones over here. So, like, if we have to hop back, like, we can do <laughs> that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um uh, and Deeran gets nervous mentioning standing stones in front of two people that uh, don't know what they are. Uh, uh, but he also tries to, like, and, and, I mean, like, you know, so that we, like, that's the name of the, the dock or whatever where we can rent a boat to, like, uh, dri- drive back, right? Like, that's the name of it. Eridar, uh, he doesn't buy it and he looks intrigued. <laughs> Uh, Ellery's grandmother didn't seems even indifferent. Let me roll deception. <laughs> uh, yes, correct. <laughs> uh, Ellery's grandma seems indifferent to whatever it is you're talking about. <laughs> that tracks. He um, says nothing though. Uh, Eridar, he just watches. Great. Uh, Deeran also says nothing more. Great. Well, forever. <laughs> 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 uh, so, so sorry. Why, why, do you, why were we going to the uh, capital of? Uh, you don't have no. to, but if you want a reward, yeah, that's why. Uh, that would be the right way, or right place to go. Go, to, go to. And just think, Scarpin. Just think, if we get a reward, then when we go back to Elgrimon's shop, we'll actually maybe be able to buy some things. Mm. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or we can, you know, just skip it all together and know we are not able to buy some things. I mean, I, and I feel like, I feel like going there, we could also, I don't know, find some more information about something. There's the, uh, the, <laughs> the, this threat is happening everywhere, right? We, we can, I know news travels kind of unevenly and slow across the continent, but we could find some news and figure out other things about what's happening. I, I think it's a good idea to go there first, get our reward, gather some information, figure out what we can well, find out, and then go from there. Yeah, and, and this isn't anything my grandma ever said, um, but she did tell me about a grumpy old man who used to all the time say that that the best reward you can ever get is information. Oh. <laughs> he sounds wise. <laughs> you always you always said he was grumpy. Well, I believe that too. <laughs> Both things can be true. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony doesn't know how to recover from this. 
I've said my piece. <laughs> <laughs> so then let's let's rest for the night and then head off to uh, Tianol. You yeah. all get some yes. rest. I'll head back to the village to make sure things are in order. And Ellery, when you get a little more of your story complete, you come and find me. I will. And all of you will be welcome in my home. Hey, we, um, just a minute. Sorry. Uh, I know I said, I know I said some, uh, dumb stuff a minute ago, uh, but like, if you're going back to the village, can we go there too? So we don't have to sleep in a cave? It doesn't seem like a great idea right now to be bringing a bunch of people that the people don't know into the village when they're just recovering from this paranoia. So you're just going to make your poor uh, wounded granddaughter uh, sleep out here in oh, the dirt? Oh, oh no, no, no. Mind. She okay. could come with me if she wants. It's just the rest of you. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> All right. That makes sense. <laughs> hey, we... Um, uh, Deeran looks down and he like pulls off his uh, like bloodstained, disgusting shirt uh, and like rings it out on the ground. And his like tiny, sickly, like uh, weakling looking body uh, is underneath the shirt. And he goes, w- will you take this back and wash it, Ellery? Oh, no, I'm not. Gonna- I'm going to stay with you guys. Why would you do that? <laughs> because comfort is 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 what you make of it. It's a good one. I like that a lot. I'm going to start saying that all the time. Wow. Did you guys, did you hear? I liked say it. Something I liked I it said. a lot. Yeah. It's not yeah, a good I saying. I think there's also objective comfort. Uh, <laughs> here, oh, here, dear. And I'm so sorry. I've been so selfish. Here. And she gives him her, her, his coat back. Now you can be comfortable. Uh, Dieran is noticeably more comfortable uh, wearing his big old <laughs> well, jacket. Well, I mean, uh, like his robe wrapped I mean, it, around him. Like it seems all... like you made this a much more comfortable experience for yourself, Dieran. So I feel like there is a nugget of truth in what Ellery said. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. She's pretty smart. Uh, and Dieran dumps, like, dunks his uh, his gross ass shirt in the like leftover water from uh from dinner there it is like well that was my water supply for the week but okay (laughs) (laughs) rings it out on the ground and like leaves it uh hanging (laughs) next to the fire uh to dry off Uh, i guess that'll be good enough uh i don't know uh the maroon doesn't really go with the the blue of this jacket but that's fine uh (laughs) And, like, starts preparing a bed for himself. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you guys get a long rest in the cave. Uh, and you are refreshed. And le- healed. And level six. And level six. Woo! Spell slotted. Uh, yeah, when so, you, go ahead. Uh, my level six, I got one more level. You don't need to do uh, that again. We already talked about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, 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 sorry. You're just going to edit the episode so that... All that goes in right here? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to open with that, but now it's active. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, okay. So you wake up. You've done it. Eridar is still so- here. He's uh, sitting at the mouth of the cave looking outward. Here's a thing for me uh, where D&D breaks my immersion, Anthony. Okay. Everybody's waiting. I went to bed with four hit points. Yeah. Yeah. After an eight-hour rest, Mm -hmm. I am now back to full. Well, sure. But, Mike, think about it this way. Let's say I break your leg, right? I cut you across the chest several times with a sharp knife. um, And I punch you in the skull a bunch of times, right? And sure. then I yeah, let yeah, you yeah. go to sleep for eight, eight full hours. <laughs> like you're going to yeah. be fine when you get up. <laughs> there's a, okay. Okay, there's an cool. alternate version of the rules where a short rest is 24 hours and a long rest is a week. It sounds awful to play and I'm glad we don't do it. 
That's <laughs> brutal. I think anyway, the, the real Mike answer is... Mike is in is... month four out of six of Achilles healing. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, like, <laughs> we have a healers who would help us heal while we rest. Like, I, I think the okay, real answer no is... No offense, that... Mikey, but, like... <laughs> Healers can't make you heal in eight hours <laughs> in our real world. Wait, can they? Am I oh, am I getting am I won't. getting jobbed? Won't. Yeah, I won't. was gonna say. Am I getting jobbed on my health insurance? Oh my. If I if I lived in Europe, would I be healed already? <laughs> they have potions in Europe. That's why everything is medieval. <laughs> uh but I also think it's important to note that you're supposed to be like basically a superhuman right sure that's that's the D D conceit so that's why you heal so fast everyone is wolverine well maybe not quite wolverine every adventurer is wolverine you're just not you <laughs> wow wow uh anyway enjoy your four to now 40 hit points <laughs> enjoy your 10 times the hit points you previously <laughs> 10 had. times as healthy as i went to bed <laughs> just uh, like normal when when was the last time you got a full eight hours though you know what i'm saying maybe that's the problem that's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 if we could humans only utilize 10 percent of their long rest if they could figure out a way to unlock the other 90 percent <laughs> Uh, Stupid. All right, you guys are awake cut. and feel much better. All right, <laughs> fully yeah, cut that whole bit. Uh, me and Mike, I can give you levels of exhaustion if you want. Like, I don't know what you're looking for here. No, I just, <laughs> I just, you know. Uh, Eridar sits at the mouth of the cave, staring outward at the uh, the uh, now rising sun. Has Deeran's shirt dried? Uh, yeah, it's it's. But it's like kind of, um, you know, Rusty. when you dry something, uh, it gets like like tough and not. It's not yeah, comfortable. Yeah, yeah. It's like rigid almost. Your shirt. Great. Yeah. Uh, does that mean I have a twelve AC now? <laughs> no, no, no. You know that after like ten minutes of wearing it, it's gonna be fine. But just right now, it's uncomfortable. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Deeran puts it on. He's scratchy. Yeah. Yeah. It's all crunchy. Belroth did his laundry in like a nearby river, and it's perfect. <laughs> yeah he hung it up to dry like on a line outside. Yeah. like he he's a responsible he didn't offer it for anyone else <laughs> that tracks okay so i guess uh bell roth leaves the cave half naked so that he can get dressed no. uh on his the clothes Full he has to dry. <laughs> uh anyways let's move on how many nipples does a does a tiefling have great question (laughs) great question (laughs) the uh, eridar turns he says ah everyone's feeling uh ready to go then yeah i feel amazing scarpin i want to point out that uh during your long rest there was a period of time, maybe a few minutes, where you saw a swirl of colors, some vague shapes, as though they were not part of your walking of the dream. They were like the barest hint of a dream of your own. Scarbin stays, stays quiet in the morning and just doesn't want to get too excited about it which could have been like a some bad soup or something yeah there's more gravy than a grave about that Mm. uh so uh, eridar says like uh are you ready to go away from here i thought i might help you move swiftly on your journey oh um excellent If, if you're willing to accept my aid yeah, that yes, sounds amazing. I, I, I love that idea. Very well. Uh, have you ever ridden a horse before? Any of oh, you? yes. Yes. Okay. All of us, okay. yes, I believe. We had that whole this episode will be... about horses. <laughs> <laughs> this will be like that. Certainly similar 
to riding a horse. Uh, just, you know, imagine that the horse knew exactly where it was going and didn't need you to prod it at any point during the journey. Okay, so, you know, no heels. Uh, you don't need to, to slap the creature or anything like that. It, just, it, it knows where it's going. And uh, did, please be gentle and kind. Did you think one of us was going to say giddy up to the dragon? I hope okay, not. I just wanted to clarify. I was never. But you wouldn't be the first. It's really? sometimes instinctual for people who have ridden oh horses. Oh my gosh. You know, they think like, oh, this, this creature is not going fast enough. I'll just dig my heels in. And I can't imagine horses like That's it either. That's so rude. It's just a thing that people I'm do. I'm so sorry. Wait, we're going to ride you? Well... If you're okay with that. Uh, that yeah. That amazing. I'm very excited. This is going to be so cool. Are any of you afraid of heights? Um, Belroth looks at Freya. He's like, Freya's clearly like climbed up <laughs> yeah. something and then was like, oh no, I'm stuck. Kind of that situation. <laughs> so he's never oh, really sure. been sure if she's afraid of heights or just kind of like, you know, too much cat still in there. Like... <laughs> I was going to say, the cat with the bat wings is afraid of heights. Great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> All right. Um, then out of the cave we go. And uh, Eridar steps out of the cave and transforms himself into his large draconic form. And you get the sense that this is, uh, it, it almost looks like he's made himself larger than he was. Uh, this is a very big creature uh, standing outside the cave now. Whoa. Oh, dibs on the front, and Deeran like runs you close shotgun, uh, dude. to the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he puts a uh, finger on his nose and uh, runs. Damn it. <laughs> Punch buggy. Um, Ellery's <laughs> Ellery's gonna jump up right behind Deeran and like squeeze into like his sides because she is a little bit afraid of heights, but she's never gonna say it. Right. Right. Okay. Belroth positions. That's not cool. Belroth positions Freya in front of him, and then like is behind Freya. I don't know okay. how Freya would ride a dragon. How would that work? Yeah, I think claws like out. <laughs> what, what, Mike? Yeah. claws out. Yeah. yeah, we were gonna get to that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think like her head drooped to one side and her tail drooped to the other in front of you, right? It'll like, be okay. You... It'll be okay, girl. It'll be okay. I'll, like I'll a saddlebag. Yeah, like a saddlebag. And like I, I, I like, you know, I've got, I've got a, I got a, a, a grip on her, the scruff of her neck. So interestingly, Anti Belroth made a saddlebag out of her first, and then <laughs> switched to true. a cloak. Well, he's dead. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Deeran made sure of it. <laughs> After you killed Deeran. Oh, stop changing the subject. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Like from the front, holding on to two of the spheres. I'm just saying, man. It was kind of weird. <laughs> Is uh, Scarpin? Do you just hop on the back then? Yeah, Scarpin. Scarpin's head, heads in the back. He's fine with heights. He's uh, always dreamed about flying. He's only oh, done it in dream. That's really funny and cute. I love that. Um, he turns his head back, Eridar, and he says, Hold on tight, but not too tight. And then he uh, stretches his wings out and, like, with a single push off of what? the ground, just launches into the sky. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> claws instantly shoot <laughs> out for <laughs> Freya and... Down into the scales of Eridar, who's like, Sorry, Eridar! I'm sorry! <laughs> yeah, as soon as it takes off, Deeran can't help himself, and he just goes, Yee-haw, me! <laughs> Deeran! Like, one hand goes up in the air. <laughs> what did we just have a conversation about? I didn't say giddy up! You just did! <laughs> uh, the flight is fast. Uh, and it is, uh, only like 10 minutes to close a huge amount of distance as this creature is just hurtling itself through the air. Oh. And that's a little bit what it feels like. It's not graceful like a bird. Uh, it is, it's like every time he starts to descend and fall, he just grabs the air around him and throws himself 
upward into the air uh, and he like peaks and then starts to fall again. Oh. It's uh, sort of like double jumping. Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. <laughs> double, triple, quadruple jumping through the air uh, with his wings, which are doing, but he's not soaring at all. <laughs> it's just <laughs> tossing himself forward uh, at a, a ridiculous speed. Uh, you kind of have to hug the spines uh, a little bit to keep from hurtling off the back. And uh, in a short amount of time, he lands with a hard thump, uh, but absorbs most of the shock of that uh, onto the ground out a little ways outside the city. Like he didn't land in the middle of the capital, uh, but but nearby. He didn't want to incite a panic. Freya jumps just off. The giant dragon Go ahead. flying outside of the city. Just just outside the city. Yeah, yeah. he lands in like a forest, you know, uh, nearby. <laughs> You're going to have to walk for like an hour, but That's fine. It's, it's better than if he'd, you know, uh, done the yeah, thing. The parking sucks, but like, <laughs> everything else about it is pretty cool. That was the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. That was, that was something else. And then Belroth looks over and Freya is like doing the like huh, 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 like the cat barf is coming Ugh, <laughs> so gross i'm sorry everyone I'm, I'm sorry i said this was probably gonna be a thing <laughs> so i feel like i just want to say that i feel like this is like coolest time to have uh this happen in an episode because i feel like mike and i literally just had this experience um <laughs> of like flying a drag we did the avatar right right uh flight of passage ride um, and you're literally on the back of like a big giant dragon and you can feel like it breathing and you're like, it was rad as hell. Uh, and so I feel like while you were describing it, I was like reliving that ride. You're welcome. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I know exactly what this is like. Um, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks to suck, I guess. It does. You're right. <laughs> yeah, Steph is officially a Disney person now. Yeah. Oh <laughs> Sorry. Everyone. You're welcome, everyone. I can show you a dragon. <laughs> I don't All know right. why I thought he was going in a different direction. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I why would why. I go in that direction? I don't know. It was like, this is a bad idea, Rob. Don't do it, Rob. Don't, don't do this uh, bit. Bail uh, out. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> It was never my intention, and it was never going there. <laughs> wow, Rob. Rob, I can't yeah. believe you did wow. that in, on the show. This is recorded. This is, Yikes. yeah, this is a family podcast. <laughs> uh, Honestly, though, if you're listening, tell your dads, tell your moms, uh, yeah, share the podcast your with your family. That direction yeah. I'm fine with. If you're listening, tell your parents. Maybe don't like that. You know who would love this? My four-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. You know you're a parent. You figure it out. It's up to you. <laughs> it's your fucking kid. <laughs> it's your kid. Yeah, it's, yeah, your, it's dumb your fucking, fucking kid. kid. Figure it out. Yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> if you think your kid should listen to this shit, hit play. <laughs> but like on their account, you set up set up a separate account for them. <laughs> so that we get and the then, numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm just make sure that. they give us a five star. Yeah, make sure they smash that, that five important. star. Yeah, get them Have them teach you stars. how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can teach your parents. That's right. Um Okay. So, you're outside the city, Eridar transforms back. Ooh. Um uh, he says this is the only place with free parking. Uh okay. and then he <laughs> I don't uh, Okay. <laughs> Oh, they make you pay tariffs in some cities. Uh, like, if you leave your wagon there too long, uh, it's like a whole thing, uh, especially in Federation Bay, because, like, uh, there's a lot of tourists, and so, like, they get the tariffs uh, for the cart parking, and then, like, if you leave your cart there too long, uh, then they they fine you for it, and so they get the tourists twice, because, like, tourists don't know where to look for the official sign. Mm. Definitely... They'll tow the carts. They'll tow the carts here. You guys just were way too recently in Disney, guys. Like it's just <laughs> like it's showing. <laughs> uh, oh well, I will say, good luck. Um, hopefully that the rest of the challenges that you face are attainable, and uh, within your grasp. Hopefully, this was the most difficult of the demons to defeat. Uh, well, I hope so. Yeah, that'd be great. I don't think it's true, but I hope so too. 
Oh, come on, Bella Roth. Who was, we, who was that other one? She was scary. Should there be a way that I might help you in the future, uh, please do not hesitate to let me know and I will do what I can. Oh, uh, how would we get in contact with you? Do you have some sort of stone we could crush to, like, call you or... I've heard about no. that before. No, where... that would be... <laughs> Like, It'd be ridiculous. No, I'll just be here in the forest. You can come and find me. Oh, okay. I don't really go anywhere, so you know my cave. You know my cave. Is it come come back? <laughs> Does your cave have a mailing address? Uh, what? No. Well, then how? No, I. You should get a mailing address for your cave. Get a PO box, so we can well, send you a mail if we need you. This is where I feel like we could send. Yeah, Belroth, we could always send a letter to Idra. And then Idra could go to the cave. Oh, good point, good point, good point. Like, if she's not busy or right, whatever. Right, 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 right. Well, like, this has been great. Uh, good luck. I, I. It's been some time since I've uh, involved myself in the affairs of your world. And I would say that this was um, exhausting, but also, uh, you know, a great reminder as to why I don't do it anymore. <laughs> Well, th I thank you so much, Eridar. I, I, I do really appreciate the, the help and information that you got, or gave us. Bye, Eridar. Bye. Yeah, Eddie. bye. Oh, thank Eridar. you. Bye. He just starts to walk through the like he walks away from you through the forest in his human form. Why do you think he didn't just like, fly back? Like, maybe he likes, you know. Taking it easy. Yeah, I guess he did say he didn't have anything really going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. He just kind of, you know, didn't have any plans. Just, just go for a walk. Yeah, but like, I feel like if I were a dragon, I'd fly everywhere. Oh. Yeah. I mean, but if you're like a hundred thousand years old like he is, maybe, you know, sometimes you just want to walk. I just can't imagine maybe, that. I hate walking. Maybe he's going to see another dragon in the area. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's dropped us off, he and then he's yeah. going to see his oh, girl I... or boy or whatever friend, and they're going to go have a great time. We should have... I thought... Ellery, I thought there was something going on between, like, your grandma and Eridar. No. I just... I'm just saying, like, she was at his place, you know? Like, yeah, because she needed... Because she needed somewhere to stay. Yeah, she needed someplace safe, and the first person she thought of was Eridar. You know, dear and old friends. Dear and a man and a woman can be best friends without there being anything romantic happening between That's them. That's true. Yeah, I haven't seen it before. <laughs> I, I mean, I've I've seen I it before. Right. I've seen it plenty of times. I have several female friends. It's not weird. It's only weird when you make it weird. Yeah, it's only the people commenting on it and making it mm -hmm. weird. You know, there's a travel and play that's all about superheroes. And, you know, one of the superheroes uh, that's a really good, kind of like Balroth, really good with an arrow, is best friends with another superhero who's like, she's a very good fighter. And everyone's like, oh, they're in love and they're not. I haven't seen that. <laughs> it's really good. It shows, it shows that there can be, you know, platonic friendship. I, and it, not everything has to be made a big deal. I, I do feel like that kind of undersells the plot. There was a, an apocalyptic event that happens and... There really wasn't a chance to. It's fine. It's it. I I'm agreeing with you, Ellery. <laughs> You're good. You it's kind of weird when you have to when you say something and you have <laughs> well, to follow it up. With well, I I realized like that, that. Yeah, I was sounding. Like I was that, I was like... being contrarian and I wasn't trying to and I'm trying to stop doing that. But it's still it's so burned into my personality that I hate it. But it's you know I don't want to. I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. It seems like a very good way to end conversations with people you like, and I don't want to do that anymore, because I like you all. Oh, thanks, Bill Roth. Yeah. I mean, I like you too. I mean... Uh, I, don't, I don't, like... I don't feel like... Uh, I... Uh, what it, What is going on? <laughs> are, are you supposed to say that? Like, after... So someone says, oh, I really like you... Uh, like, are you supposed to say back, like, oh, I really like you too, or are you supposed to just say thanks? I have no idea, but I, I'm glad you said it back, so that's the answer. All right, cool. Scarpin, <laughs> what do you think? Well, it depends if you like them or not. <laughs> 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 
Uh, I shouldn't well, lie. Okay. Well, sure. But so if you if you do like them, you're supposed to say. I back? assume we're walking while we're having this conversation. Yeah. I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> no. It would be so weird to just stop in the middle of the forest and hash this out. Seems like something we'd do. I was gonna say, but also very Tessa. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. We can't continue until we figure out the fine details of something that <laughs> doesn't matter. Oh, look, we're at the oh, Capitol. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as you arrive at the Capitol, oh, no. um, the Capitol is a uh, coastal city, and it is the main through port for everything that comes in and out of Eviara back toward the mainland. Additionally, from the ports of Eviara, you can look out into the distance and see the Demon Isles, uh, as they are not that far Whoa. to the west from here. Um, now, as you enter the city here and are, can see the docks and see out westward, westward from Eviara, what you see is that there seems to be some sort of large barrier between you and the demon isles. It is like a shimmering purple haze that is like an, or like a, a dome around the demon isles. Uh, Bell Roth's kind of, jolly demeanor and candor as he was talking about what technically friendship means um <laughs> very abruptly goes away as he's looking at his home reminded that it's different and transformed hey we'll get it back but we he slaps him on the shoulder Ow. <laughs> uh the city itself is um bustling there are people moving about doing all kinds of things uh city city type things there are uh pretty much anything that you could imagine here at the city uh Tienal is largely an export town so the things that are uh most common are like uh, logistics for shipping and for uh sending things away but this is still a central hub for everything in eviara so uh there, there's plenty of stuff to find here as well um there is also a large building that is sort of the center uh it, it is the uh diamer family hall and it's sort of the the seat of power here in tianal so uh if there was anywhere that you were supposed to go to meet up with uh this stout heart that is where you would want to meet them. But if there's other things you want to do or look for in the city before that, that is also an option. I feel like with the way this episode is going, let's just get straight yeah, there. Let's, I, yeah. <laughs> let's go. Like we're at the Capitol building. We're there. We're we in the Stout Hearts <laughs> office. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you head waiting. off to find uh, uh, Prudence Stout Heart, uh, who is. Uh, part of now the Diomer family here in uh, Eviara, one of the the old families. Uh, but the Stouthearts themselves, who have really taken over the top end of that family as like the the leadership, uh, supplanted the old family and and really are the family in name now. Uh, they sort of run every level of the government in this area. Um, and your letter of introduction or your, your letter of, of uh, accreditation from your grandmother uh, gets you to Prudence herself, to an audience with Prudence. So this is the Empire's uh, vassal here. In the, She is the level of Viscount. Um, and so that is... Uh, where she is at within the structure of the empire. Um, and so you get in to see her. There's a long line of other uh, people waiting to see her. Um, as you wait in that line, you watch as basically she is just denying every request that comes across uh, from the people, uh, except for there are some spellstone merchants who come in and, and request more, uh, access to the shipping lanes to send more spellstone back to the mainland. And that is approved 
like immediately. Um, it's clear that that is like the major export out of here uh, is the spell stone. And then finally, it's your turn. Um, and you stand uh, across the small chamber. It's austere, uh, but, you know, she's got a big throne in it, but it's not like uh, large tapestries or anything like that. It's a pretty small room. It's sparsely decorated, uh, but it is a she still made herself important here. Hello, welcome, welcome. What um what can I do for you? Um hi, uh my name is Ellery Realtonum, uh, and she like curtsies. Realtonum, yes. Okay. What can I do for you? Um well, these are my friends. Uh we're all part of the Expedition Society of Stories and Adventures, and um this is Belroth and Deeran and Scarpin and Freya. And um, we just killed a demon and sent it back into the pit of, of, of the place, where the pit where demons go. Killed a, a demon? Mm-hmm. Do you have some sort of proof of that? Um, we have this letter from my grandma. She oh. holds out her hand for the letter. Yeah, uh, to be clear, uh, her grandma is a village elder, uh, I oh, know who her grandmother is. And, um, I also would l like to point out that we have been put in charge with uh, many of the demon ex um, investigations happening with Adventure Incorporated. Um, we have that actually, I, I believe that was, we have the paperwork for that. We were put in charge of that uh, specifically. So, um, and he like sh sh ferries that forward. I forget, was that Carapath yeah. who gave that to us? Deeran checks it's his terrible. pockets and he doesn't have it, so he looks at Scarpin. <laughs> Be Belroth has already given it. <laughs> I think it was Carapath who get, who said like we are in charge, so I assume it was like notarized somewhere. So why then, um, it's just coming to me if you are already responsible for these uh, activities. Why, why am I now getting this uh, my time wasted? Um. Well, you see, there were a lot of things happening. You might have noticed a lot of the, the towns here in Aviara had been uh, fallen prey to this demon. They were turning on each other. There were rumors and riots and, and you know, just generally, like, ill-behaved folks, you know? And um, so we were hoping that maybe for solving this problem in your kingdom, there might be some sort of, um, whether it's, uh, you know... Um, She's trying really hard not to like say the word reward. Um, whether it's uh, you know, there's anything that you can do for for us after what we've done for y you. She's scanning this letter. She says, "This says you're looking for a reward." Oh, well, if you're offering, we'd <laughs> gladly take one. So, this says you solved the problem in Naya. Have you solved it for the other places as well? Well, we got rid of the source of all the problems in Naya, which are also the source of the problems everywhere else. This demon. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I, d I wasn't sure that that was a question, because it's what we did just said. Yeah, it sounded like you were going to say a whole, uh, you know, a whole Thing about sentence. the demon, yeah. Oh, I don't know anything about a demon. Uh, no, I know, but like the way you started it, you said, uh, this demon, and then it sounded like an ellipsis and not like... Yeah, or even a comma, Bell maybe. Roth shoots yeah. eyes at both of them, wondering what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> semicolon? Is that what it is, Belroth? No, no, it, no a, a semicolon uh, would be... You uh, know, Prudence, why don't you Ellery continue your, your thought <laughs> before we get sidetracked? <laughs> The demons, strange things have been happening the last couple of months. First, we heard word that there was dangers coming from the Demon Isles. Refugees on their way. Then before a single refugee hit our shores, the Great Barrier arrived. That purple swirling thing I'm sure you saw out there. Mm -hmm. And then... The strangeness in the villages from here to Lake Siachane started happening. Now I'm left wondering 
what all of this means and why I can't get a single answer from anyone back in the Empire. If you have dealt with this, if you have solved my problem for my people, then I am happy to provide a, a tangible reward for that. But I find myself in a position where all I have to go on is the word of a relative of yours, who, by the way, has been a real problem for me for a long time. Ooh. Have you considered that, you know, uh, sometimes problems are just misunderstandings from both ends and could be solved with some proper communication rather than holding grudges? Oh, I sure wish I could get that from her. Yes, that would be wonderful. I've tried so a few different I said, delegations. Th so that's the, okay. I've tried a few. If, if you can find me another way to try and sit down and have talks with your grandmother, I would be happy to try and have those. It does not do me any favors to have villages who will not, who just ignore every edict I put out. Um, well, uh, maybe that's a conversation for another day after we deal with the, you know, the demon thing. Certainly. When we can, I mean, if you are looking for an amount of information on the, the state of the demon threat, we do have some information that we could provide. We don't have... I'm more worried about my villages, so let me tell you this. Give me two days. If you can give me two days, I'll find out what I can find out. And if you have done what you say you've done, then I will reward you with what I can offer. Which, business being what it is, probably somewhere around 20,000 gold. Oh. I wish it were more, but that's what I can do. I think that sounds amazing. She looks around. Belroth nods. Yeah, Scarpin nods. Deeran's distracted. He's somewhere else. <laughs> no, he, like, he was expecting Scarpin to angle for more. <laughs> uh, and so, like, having him not, Deeran's thrown off. Uh, and so he's like, yeah, all right, uh. He's like, Scarpin, really no. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Come sorry, on, reflex. Scarpin, I'm sorry. Uh... <laughs> Jeez, man. She just said business is tough here. Uh, oh, wait. I did hear a lot of, like, spellstone talk, uh, like, while we were waiting or whatever. Um, if you wish to have yours in spellstone, I could get you that instead. Your cut. Oh, I guess I was just thinking, like, in addition or whatever. Uh, but no, I guess that's fine. Give me time. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to use the city in whatever way you need to. And uh, we'll. I'll get back to you shortly. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, before we go, um, you mentioned refugees. I had family on the island that I've lost contact with. I don't know... If you if there's a refugee camp or or somewhere I could find information about them, I assume you would not know, yeah, like but, a, or like necessarily them a specifically. Registry? But I'm just wondering where my I, family is. I'm sorry if I was not clear. Not a single refugee hit our shores. Okay. I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. You. Okay, next. <laughs> she just like literally just pushes what? some I, some guards well, come yeah. out and like start shuffling you off. <laughs> uh, Deeran puts a hand around Belroth as they're leaving, uh, and he looks at him and says, "Hey, ma'am, uh, it's one more place she isn't." So like, <sighs> one more place. I know a lot of them. I know that there's like, aren't. yeah, I know that there's like a lot of places left, but like, you know. Uh, at least we know 
that we don't have to come back to find her here you know i, I mean i i if i'm honest i'm not super worried about dory i think she'll figure it out she's the stubbornest of us all but my i mean i had cousins and and and, and nieces and nephews and other relatives like whole family just gone like i know where my mother and father are probably but are they not there now like i don't Ugh. let's find a room i would like to find a room okay um you guys start to hunt around for uh, an inn it's pretty easy to track one down and then uh uh, let's see. There are some other, uh, features of the place. I know you guys don't have a lot of money right now, but there are shops <laughs> here. Uh, Deeran has 150. Oh, he has 155 gold. He's all set. Yeah. Ellery has 130. If you want to track down a shop, you can. Uh, no, 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 no. We meant for like a nice, like, like room Roman to food stay. Yeah, yeah, and... yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. it's like, yeah. I'll, I'll fire it up. I was worried at how cheap uh, our, our, our accommodation <laughs> would have to be. Are we staying in another fucking cave? <laughs> gonna go out to free parking land. We're gonna spend some gold on some new clothes and <laughs> play some things. Oh uh, yeah, Deeran would like to buy a shirt. Sure, I think that I think probably for a total of a gold, you can get a place to stay and a new change of traveling clothes. Sweet. Bell Roth um, does that. Great. And meals for the time frame. Great deal. Dieran um, also will choose to do that. There are a couple other things here. There is a uh, a temple set up for the um, celestial host. There is, um, uh, on the outskirts of town, there is a grove set up for the uh, Agrestal spirit. There is a library in town. There is a um, school for the uh, the black scale set up in town. Um, and there are uh, a few other things. So if there's a, anything that, you know, there's a broker for Adventure Incorporated here, uh, as well as some of the other adventuring companies. And if there are other things you want to try to track down or anywhere you want to go, there may or may not be access to those as well. Um, everyone, should we craft a letter to be sent to Adventure Inc. about our current exploit since we are de facto in charge of the demon threat and whatever? Um, should that should we do that through the broker or, or anything? Or is that just, we'll tell them when we tell them? I think that's a great idea, yeah. Okay. It'll take a while to get back, I think. Bell Roth will, yeah, like, he's not really idea. in the mood to go anywhere right now, so he's going to write the most boring, factual, this is what happened... <laughs> You know, to really cheer himself up. <laughs> to get him to... Hey everyone, DM Anthony here, just reminding you that if you're enjoying the show, tell your friends, tell your family, uh, let people know, word of mouth, and you can support the show at patreon.com slash adventuring, or you can check out the shop at adventuringpod.com slash shop. Make sure you check the show notes and the website for all our social media, including our Discord, where you can come and hang out with some great people. We'll see you there. And until next week, I wish you nothing but critical success. Serious business.